Hey guys, welcome back to Out of Spec Bits. You join me outside of a Rivian Adventure Network station here with my R1T in Hartford, Connecticut. But we're not here to talk about Rivian Adventure Network charging. We're here to talk about Tesla supercharging and Tesla's 168 stall with a lounge off-grid Tesla supercharger, okay? Lost Hills, California. This is absolutely insane, all right? The fact that they're building a 168 stall Tesla supercharger and already 84 of those stalls, so half is already live and usable, so you can go there and charge now. But when it's completed, 168 stalls is alone by itself absolutely insane. But you add on the fact this isn't connected to any city, state, or county electricity. This is totally off grid. So when the zombie apocalypse does happen, we will still be able to charge our EVs. What will internal combustion engine owners do? Don't know what to tell them, but us and our EVs will be charging off grid. Now this is absolutely insane to me. Right? It took Tesla just eight months to build and go live with this station for the first 84 stalls, 10 mega packs, 11 megawatts of off-grid power, which is 11,000 kilowatts or the equivalent to 110 Tesla Model S batteries. All right. And again, they're going to open another 84 stalls in the future with a lounge. And so this is going to have a lounge. It's got off-grid power and it's got 84 Tesla supercharging stalls. This is insane. And I would love to see other you know, uh, CPOs, charge point operators do the same. I would like to see a Rivian off-grid RAN. I would like to see an off-grid IANA. I think it's important that charging infrastructure can be separate from, you know, the likes of local electricity infrastructure because let's say some sort of natural weather disaster happens or the electricity shuts off and you need to charge your EV. Well, when it's off-grid, you are able to still charge your car. Now, that is not to mention there are many Tesla superchargers that are still connected to the grid that have mega packs. So even if electricity from the city, the state, the county, whatever shuts off, you'll still be able to charge. And they even use those mega packs to charge off grid power. And then, of course, use it during on peak charging. So, right. Tesla's able to have margins with their Tesla supercharging network. The point being, it's really cool that you can provide an off-grid solution. So again, when the zombie apocalypse does happen, these will still be working and you know, the internal combustion engine owners will be out of luck. Tesla's ability to scale Tesla's supercharging network is absolutely amazing. On my road trip, I've exclusively used Tesla supercharging and the Rivian Adventure Network and the Tesla supercharging network has come in absolute clutch. It's in areas where there is no other charging or it's in an area with other charging, but it's way cheaper than the competition. And so it makes an easy choice, especially with such a big battery and where charging can be pretty expensive. A bit of a side note here, the Rivian Adventure Network station that I'm currently charging at, for this time, it is 58 cents a kilowatt hour. The Tesla supercharger just down the street, it's just 36 cents a kilowatt hour with membership pricing, but it's below what Rivian is charging for non-members. So Tesla is charging charging much less for charging than its competitors and they're scaling a lot better i mean why hasn't anyone else really caught up to what tesla is doing of course we have companies like iana and bp pulse which are scaling out and they're building reliable stations with decent pricing uh, we have rivian another automaker that is scaling out its charging network but no one is doing it at the scale as Tesla, and of course Tesla's been doing it for a very long time now, but the prices, the entire ecosystem, Tesla supercharging is hard to beat. And I wonder what the future of charging infrastructure is like. I mean, when the first gas stations were introduced, they were introduced by automakers. And with time, as these gas stations became huge monopolies, the US government forced them to kind of separate off and become their own companies. I wonder if Tesla supercharging would get to the point where it's so big that 100 years from now, Tesla supercharging and Tesla as the company, two different companies with two different ethoses, just two separate companies entirely. Because I think the infrastructure for charging is going to be a really big business. It already 
is a big business, but just 10% of new cars, it's a little less than that or more about that, new sold are EVs. What happens when that's 90%, 80%, 70%, even just 50%? And Tesla is going to have most of the business. Anyway, that's just what I'm thinking. Now that 11 megawatts of off-grid power provided by solar panels and solar canopies is on 30 acres of land and that power gets sent to Tesla's 10 megapacks with 39 megawatt hours of storage, which is absolutely crazy. And I'll read this directly from Tesla's own X Twitter article. Interstate five between San Francisco and Los Angeles is one of the busiest EV corridors in the world. As a testament to Tesla's charging journey, Harris Ranch, California was one of the first locations to open in October of 2012. Featuring a single stall 90 kilowatt supercharger, it even showcased battery swap pilots in 2014. Today it's 98 stalls of 250 kilowatt supercharging strong with Tesla Megapack and covered with solar canopies. You've likely seen this Tesla supercharger before. It is probably the famous, if not one of the most famous Tesla superchargers. And Tesla goes on to say, as we continue to expand, we're breaking ground today on the latest project along this corridor, Oasis. Some details, again, 168 stall supercharger in Lost Hills, California, only 1.5 megawatts of grid service ahead of a future expansion. 11 megawatts of ground mount solar and canopies on 30 acres of land, 10 Tesla mega packs with 39 megawatt hours of storage. This project embodies the Tesla supercharging DNA, accelerating EV adoption through dependable freedom to travel, providing charging needs through determination and innovation. Now that article was from October of 2024. Now we head all the way fast forward to 2025, mid 2025, July. 2025 and it is officially open. Tesla's head of supercharging Max went on to say from rendering to reality, we started exploring this project two years ago. It was clear that there would be a significant shortage of charging capacity for this corridor, that the 20 megawatt plus utility upgrades would not arrive in time and that nobody was doing anything about it. Tesla charging is serious about not slowing down EV adoption and hence had to leverage the full Tesla energy ecosystem. Congrats to the hardcore teams on delivering on time for summer peaks. Yeah, it's worth mentioning, right? Tesla builds solar panels. They also build batteries and the mega packs. And so from end to end, this is really a Tesla system. Unlike Rivian, who says that they build their dispensers and charging equipment in-house, there's a lot more that they get from third parties. And you have a company like Tesla that is building and expanding the entire process from how they get the energy to how they deliver the energy to EVs is actually insane. And again, another testament to the scaling that Tesla has done and their entire ecosystem. Now, of course, if you visit this Tesla supercharger, feel free to at out of spec on Twitter, Instagram, wherever, please share it with us. Let us know down in the comments below. This is pretty exciting. Now, California, you guys are getting all of the good charging infrastructure. What's happening on the East Coast? I would love to see Tesla do more expanding on the East Coast. I know California has some energy dependability issues, um, but this would be awesome. And I think it's important that we see the scaling of off-grid charging. And honestly, I wouldn't be against it being some sort of standard. Of course, it makes sense that you would have the chargers be connected to the grid uh, to some capacity, if not at all times, but for the times when you need to be off grid, there's some sort of natural disaster, the grid has shut down, whatever it is, you're still able to charge your EV. And that's gonna become more and more important as we see the scaling of EVs. I mean, most new car sales are internal combustion engine and we're gonna need more infrastructure, infrastructure that can handle all of that power being sucked into all of those EV batteries. We're going to need to make sure that the grid is stable. And in some areas, it's not gonna be able to handle that. And that's where off-grid solutions like solar, like wind, like hydro, whatever it may be, off-grid not connected to the city, county, state, these private electric companies, is going to do us EV owners and even Tesla's benefit a lot of good, at least for Tesla's margins. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is Out of Spec Bits and I'll see you guys in the next one.